Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. I said, hey, what's up? Hello. I don't know the lyrics, but I know how the song goes. Nice. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. In the last episode, Camilla talked a bit about her phobia and how it's been difficult to face that and what she's been going through as part of that journey. In this episode, we're going to jump a bit more into some of the things that I've gone through and um, just how I've continued to look to God and see his presence throughout my life. And yeah, let's jump in. <laughs> While I was in college, um, I had started going to church. I had a couple of roommate or a roommate and a, my best friend in college um, who were going to the same church. And they both really around the same time encouraged me to join them. And uh, so I went to check it out and was kind of, I actually really enjoyed going to church. Like uh, the messages always were really powerful, um, many times convicting, uh, but it was I was having a really hard time looking at my sin and acknowledging it as sin. Mm. And a lot of, you know, I'm a really like skeptical question authority kind of person. And so I had a lot of reservations about what church meant, what, what all of it was, and mm -hmm. was still pretty skeptical in my heart in the beginning there. And um, so I think that really played into this story is I just didn't have super strong faith in the beginning. It was something that's been developing for more than 10 years now. Yeah. And certainly those first eight years were probably really slow. And then the last two years I've seen a significant amount of change. So mm -hmm. I think that's, um, <clears throat> why do you think that is why there's a significant amount of change? <clears throat> I think that's, one, going to church regularly yeah. has really been an impact there, but also just leaning into our church community, like trying to actually meet people and live life with other believers, I think has really transformed being mm -hmm. in a Bible study. Yeah, actively Doing pursuing. classes at our church as well has mm -hmm. helped a lot. The marriage class completely transformed mm -hmm. our relationship and our life and mm -hmm. our relationship to God. I think that's only really the case because we started doing that together. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have done any of those things on my own because I have a, a lot of social anxiety that gets in the way there. And so I don't, I'm not going to be the by myself in a classroom full of people. I'm not mm -hmm. going to sign up for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's just, the, those are the spaces where I feel really uncomfortable and I have since I was a kid, you know, that's mm -hmm. just, that's, it's something that I felt as part of me is that social anxiety. Mm. and um it's not seeing, part of you yeah i'm i'm seeing it start <laughs> to go away a little bit but it's really slow that's probably that's probably the largest thing that i haven't seen significant transformation in it's a bit more slow but mm. you know this is one of those things where we talked about in a previous episode we kind of have to trust god's plan and you know i shouldn't accept that as part of my identity like my, you know, my identity is in Christ. It's not that I am an anxious person or I have, I have social anxiety. That's just one thing that I'm dealing with. And I trust that it's going to go away at some point. Mm -hmm. It's part of why the, us sitting on a camera and, and doing a podcast, uh, was really, is still really hard for me is, um, that, yeah, that social anxiety. So yeah, I was going to church, like kind of regularly uh, with my my friends in college, but um, they both graduated a lot earlier than me and moved away. And so, you know, kind of like I was saying, it was just me solo for a while. And I just felt really anxious in a large crowd of people like showing up on myself, I felt really anxious. And so I kind of stepped away for a, a while, like I'd still read my Bible, but I wasn't like super active in pursuing the church, pursuing community, and even pursuing change in my life, I just kind of stagnated a bit. And mm -hmm. it's really addressing <clears throat> sin or false beliefs is something that is really challenging to do. Yeah. Um, really hard to acknowledge those things. So, especially when you don't have a community. Yeah. 
<clears throat> to support you and to keep you accountable mm-hmm. and remind you that there's grace for you mm-hmm. and love for you, even though you're struggling yeah. with your sin. Really hard to do, to realize that on your own. Yeah, without that support system. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that's kind of what happened. I wasn't going to church as much, but still, I still believed in God and I just wasn't actively like radically transforming my life, you know, wasn't really submitting, I guess. I'm very much, you know, strong arm personality, like, oh, I can get through this. I'm, I'm tough, Hmm. whatever, you know? So on the flip side of that, I have a really hard time with vulnerability and, you know, submitting to God. And so, yeah, that was part of the, part of my story in college, like towards the end of my college, um, one of my brothers passed away and that was, I think just really kind of rattling, not necessarily like I lost faith, but it is one of those like faith challenging moments. It's like the first major loss you experience, Mm -hmm. um, can be really tough. Um, and I struggled with that for a while. Like, how do I reconcile what's going on in my life and this suffering? How do I reconcile that with my faith, which is all these beautiful promises from God. Mm. And it was a really challenging season. Um, and then only about a year later, I, I lost another brother. And so that kind of double whammy, uh, just a, just really shocking, you know, really hard to go through that. And it was a season of loss, but it felt like a season where like, I don't know, like, who am I going to lose next? It felt like things, you know, family is being stripped from you. So that, that was a area where I wish I had really thought like I should go to my Bible and read it and see what it has to say, you know, see what God has to say to me. But Mm -hmm. it, that just didn't really cross my mind in that season. And, uh, I really held on to that for a while, for a few years. And I think once I started leaning back into faith is when I was able to start healing those wounds and, really understand a bit more um, hold on to what for a while the loss of my brothers Mm -hmm. really just like internalized that and bottled it up for a while Mm. and uh, i mean i think that's part of like i i could see that even in my body like stiff insane amounts of stiffness soreness pain back problems that kind of thing Mm. um i do really think we store we can store a lot of trauma in our bodies Mm -hmm. and so that, that was the experience for me is I kind of just bottled it up and internalized it a bit and didn't really, I guess I didn't fully process it from like a faith perspective until many years later. And so mm-hmm. I wish I had turned to my Bible and read it and I, it just didn't, that didn't occur to me until a couple of years after, mm-hmm. after that. Um, but yeah, I've seen, since we started leaning into to our church community and regularly reading our Bible and and praying and praying, we didn't have the habit of praying or reading our Bible or mm-hmm. studying God's word until these last two years. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Once we started doing that, I I felt a lot of that weight come off, and I think it's safe to say that even though you believed in God before. It wasn't until we started seeking him like very intentionally Mm -hmm. that your faith increased. Yeah. Yeah. I never had the concept growing up. We, you know, I talked about in the first episode Mm -hmm. how like I kind of grew up, I didn't really grow up in the church, but like we'd go to church sometimes. Yeah. And so I had this concept of God as super external and I didn't really understand that Jesus offers us a relationship you know, that's, Mm -hmm. that's one of the most incredible things that he he's given us is the ability to pray and communicate with God and have this personal relationship where when we pray, God hears our prayers and he answers those prayers. And that's one of the, one of the craziest things. And now it's, that's not to say like, pray for pray to win the lottery and I win the lottery tomorrow. The thing is we don't He hears you and he responds, but it's not always what you want to hear. God everything that God does is according to his will and his plan and he will answer your prayers in accordance with that plan mm. and what's best for you. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, the concept of parenting, you know, you don't give a toddler <laughs> 
you don't give a toddler everything they want immediately. You know, that's, that's not gonna, not what's good for them. That's not gonna, yeah, yeah. it's not going to be good for them. And they want some pretty ridiculous things. And <laughs> we don't same, know. What, we same, don't know what's best for us. The same is true of us. Yeah. I and mean, we we ask for sometimes demand ridiculous um, things that actually wouldn't be beneficial to us. Wouldn't be beneficial to our heart. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't be good for us in the long run. And so, and we see this. People do win the lottery, and a lot of people blow through it. You know, yeah. like it doesn't bring happiness. Yeah, and they're they're right back where they started with an even larger hole, you know, of mm-hmm. emptiness there. Um, and so, yeah, money isn't the thing you should really be pursuing. There's a lot of things that we ask for that we really shouldn't be pursuing, but um, developing that relationship with God is really where I've found a lot more peace and have been able to, I guess, better understand and better reason with, like, why those moments of suffering have come Mm. now looking back they god gave me people like camilla was in my life um right around that time and uh, was able to support me through that and so the thing is i don't i don't believe that god's gonna put you through something that you can't handle Mm. he he knows Mm. this all each individually very well saying that god won't put me through something that i can't handle is kind of like putting the blame on him for why something bad might happen. Mm. I'm not trying to say that. I know you're not trying to say that. I just want to emphasize that that's not what you're trying to say. And I guess that the, what we should all keep in mind is that even when we're going through Mm -hmm. something really difficult, yeah, like God has, God has his hand go through something that you can't handle. He will give you the resources to get you through any situation. And that's really what I was trying to say is, yeah, yeah. Suffering is really a product of a broken world. Like that's, yeah, it's not his fault. It's, yeah, it's not, (laughs) it's not like, yeah, God is putting me through this particular thing. Yeah. Um, but God does give us the resources, like people to lean on community, these support systems, um, he's also always there with you. Mm-hmm. So when I was growing up, you know, I was raised to be more self-sufficient. And so that's why mm-hmm. I didn't really, you know, God was external and I, and I'm here, you know, and I was really raised to push through things on my own. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I didn't really understand that like God was here walking with me. Mm-hmm. I always heard like, you're strong, you're independent. And we all hear that in culture and mm-hmm. I don't really th- I don't really believe that to be the case. Like, absolutely, we are capable of doing tons of things yeah. through free will. We have so like so many capabilities. It's incredible what we can do when we put our mind to things, mm-hmm. right? Whether those things be good things or bad things. What I'm trying to get at is we aren't really independent. Everything we do affects our family, our community, and vice versa. God feels our pain. And, you know, obviously when, when we do certain things, like he's upset or angry by those things. Hmm. You disagree? Um, you're saying when we do wrong, when we sin? Yeah. Um, no, I don't see God as like someone that's impacted. Well, he is, but it doesn't like change things. No, it doesn't change him. It doesn't like, change his character. No. Yeah, I'm sure it hurts his heart to see his creation suffer because that wasn't his original plan for us. Mm-hmm. But he also knows. Yeah. And I think he already knows all of the heartbreak that we're going to go through. And he already knows that the plan is for Jesus to come back and save us all. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I kind of think... That at this point in time, God has seen it all. Mm. Like, he has seen the worst of the worst happen. And I feel like at this point, I don't know, maybe he just like, like I think about what we read in Hind's Feet last night. We're reading a book right now, and I won't talk about, you should read it. It's really good. It's called Hind's Feet on High Places. Mm. And um, what was the point I was trying to get at? Um, she's crying and she's suffering and 
she doesn't call out to Jesus because she's embarrassed and she's like, I don't want to call out to him because I think he's going to make me go through mm. something even harder. Yeah. And she finally cries out to him because someone like poked her and she was in physical pain. And um, Jesus comes and his response is not at all what she thought it would be. His mm -hmm. response was like, oh, you silly child. Like he was laughing at her in a loving way of like, why would you think that I would put you through something that we can't handle together? Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at earlier. Yeah, is, yeah. You know, whether... And so I don't think God is mad at us. I think he's like, I got you. Like, I don't know. I think he might laugh at like, oh, these silly humans are doing these silly things that I already know they're going to do, but they're going to be fine. It's always fine. It's not all silly, though, is my, no. my point. No. <laughs> you know, some of the suffering is really terrible. No. Like, for, humans can do terrible things. For sure. And I mean, I think about what I talked about in the last episode like it's awful it's mm. not funny at all but picturing God's posture being like in my situation like hugging me and like patting my back and mm. being like you're okay I'm not saying that our pain and suffering is silly no but God's just like you're fine mm -hmm. like you know it's like when a little kid falls and like scrapes their knee and they're like screaming you're like you kind of laugh a little bit because you're like, it's going to be fine. Like, I've got it. Even though the pain is very real and there are a lot of dark, scary, evil things in this world, mm -hmm. sin is scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not trying to minimize the severity of sin or pain and suffering at all here. I just mean that I don't know that. I, I agree with your point that what we do affects everything mm -hmm. on a larger scale. It's important that we don't sin and that we obey Jesus and do our best to follow him. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So why would you say like casting your, your fears and anxieties on Jesus rather than internalizing? Why is that helpful? Um, because I can't rely on myself. At best we are faulty. <laughs> If I internalize my pain and my suffering, I'm going to feel bad for myself. I'm going to put myself in like a victim mindset of like, why is this happening to me? I personally increase my own suffering and make it worse by relying on myself. And I think we accidentally make it worse for other people by saying things like, you're strong. And I totally believe in the power of positive affirmations because I've personally felt how mm. powerful they are and how encouraging it is to have people that you love and trust say like you can do this thing it is helpful but when you're like in a pit like lowest low mm. two family members of yours passed mm -hmm. in a very tragic way mm. when I'm in my hole of my phobia and someone tells me, like, you got this. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm terrified. This is terrible. I cannot believe in myself at the moment. And the answer is not to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, God made us to depend on other people and to depend on him. Yeah, We are not made to be self-sufficient. So mm -hmm. for me personally, when I'm, like, crying and, like, terrified that I might throw up and you're like, you're strong. You got, I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, if I was, I wouldn't be here crying. I wouldn't feel like a baby. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah, okay. It helps, but only to an extent. <laughs> hearing the truth, instead of you are strong, for me, hearing, hey, God is strong, and he's good, and he's perfect, and he's got you. He's here with you. He, His strength is perfected in your weakness. Mm -hmm. That then I don't have to like carry that burden anymore. So right back to the question that you asked, like why is it helpful to cast your worries on Jesus? Because it's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. Like you're literally saying like, and how great is it that we have a God that wants us to do that? He's like, hey, give me all of your crap. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to hold the burden alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you can just give it to him yeah. and it's not easy. The, the God of the universe is holding that burden with you. Mm -hmm. And he's telling you, Hey, I don't, I love you. I don't want you to carry this anymore. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. 
And it takes time and practice. I don't think that it's just like a, hey, I gave this to Jesus and now I'm free and everything's perfect. It really is a practice of continuously doing that yeah. and reminding yourself and seeking him and reading his word and spending time with him in prayer and just the whole process of sanctification takes time, um, which we'll talk about later what that means. But yeah, I, th that has been huge for me in my suffering to know that I can give it to him. Sometimes it feels really easy and freeing and other times it's like, I gave it to him, but I'm still hurting and I'm still worried about it. And in that case, I asked myself, did I really give it to him? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't because I'm still worried about it, right? Like if I give you this thing that I and I trust you to take care of the thing, I have no reason to micromanage or check in on you about that thing or ever worry about that thing again, Yeah, right? Then you didn't actually hand it off. Exactly. Yeah, you're still holding onto that burden. I want to read a, a couple of verses. First from John 8, it says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that one? Jesus is God, mm -hmm. which means I can trust what he says. We don't have to walk in darkness. And I, I think that's mm -hmm. the beautiful part of this promise is we feel like we're walking in darkness through many times in our life through many seasons but jesus is saying hey follow me you won't be in darkness anymore yeah and being independent which is what our culture advertises is like being the way like mm -hmm. you can do it on your that's literally the the meaning of independent means to be on your own yeah why would you want to be alone yeah in times like that like you can't i feel like and i do this too when I rely on myself, I'm putting myself on the throne mm -hmm. and taking Jesus down and saying like, hey, I got this. Um, and I don't. I don't ever got it. I get myself into trouble a lot. <laughs> and I really don't know what's best for me. Yeah. Back to what we were saying in the beginning, God does. And so I don't want to be independent. I mm. want to rely on other people to tell me where I'm wrong and to tell me what they think is best for me you know the people that love you and know you well um aren't going to do they're not going to guide you in the wrong direction they're going to guide you in a direction that's good for you because they love you mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah if i think back to the hardest moments that i've gone through i couldn't have gone through those alone and there were people who helped me mm -hmm. get through those so mm -hmm. yeah i certainly wouldn't have wanted to be independent through those moments. Another verse I want to read from Deuteronomy 31, it says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what I was trying to get at earlier is, like, God knows what we're go going through, what we have gone through, are currently going through, and will go through. Mm -hmm. And he's there beside us. Even though those things may be challenging or you feel like you can't get through them, you will be able to because he's not going to let us experience something that we we can't get through. Mm -hmm. God is so loving that he's never going to abandon us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, which means that we can always count on him. Mm -hmm. One of the themes here is like we were really made to be dependent. We really wanted to try to poke holes in some of that, the cultural independence claims uh, and just say, like, God really wants us to seek him and have yeah. a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And that's really a huge part of why we were created. God didn't need to create us. He doesn't rely on us for anything. He's all God. powerful, almighty, yeah. created the entire universe. Yeah. But he did that out of love. I think we see that like when we when we're when we create things like how much joy we get from that mm -hmm. um and so I, I think that's really you know we were designing god's image he created us out of love and joy mm -hmm. um and really so that he could also have communion right god alone you know i think it's very different and we we notice that we don't like to feel alone 
And I think when we have community, when we have strong family ties, strong friends, that's really the moments in our lives where we feel the most contentment and joy and peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really what we were designed for as well. Like not only to experience that with each other, but to experience that with God too. That's the meaning of communion, right? It's sharing or exchanging intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when that exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really like what we were designed for is living in communion with God. Mm -hmm. um, so we can live our lives here on earth with him, follow him, live for him, and then we can spend eternity with him as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the key. And, you know, our experiences here on earth, I think are really meant to develop our hearts. I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, why would we, if you don't have a reverence and love for God, like why would you want to spend eternity with him? It's yeah. like so many things we do here is like practice for eternity. Mm -hmm. Like marriage is an example. God relates the relationship of Jesus to the church as marriage. Mm -hmm. He describes that as marriage. Yeah. And the church is his bride. It's the same is true of our relationship with God and what we will experience in eternity. This comes from Colossians 1. Uh, it says, for by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Mm -hmm. And so just, just getting back to the creation piece, it's like, that's really what we were designed for. And everything in society has even been modeled after that. Yeah. You know, like every structure is community. Um, there isn't... The, the only times that that doesn't occur, you can think of like dictatorships, you know, authoritarianism. Like those are the moments where we naturally feel uneasy. Like it doesn't feel right to have a dictatorship here on earth, right? Mm -mm. I feel like most people would say, yeah, hey, that's not a good idea, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. And yeah, those are moments where there aren't multiple people in that process you know in the governing body mm. i think we thrive better when there are more people whose voices matter right yeah but that's like kind of saying that you support big government which we don't <laughs> no no <laughs> not what i'm not what i'm saying i know that's not what you're saying we, you know just saying like a benevolent ruler yeah you know that, that just we're meant for communities like yeah you know small local mm -hmm. communities and but i guess some could say well as a christian you have one benevolent absolutely ruler <laughs> there's only one yeah one worthy of the honor and praise yeah and respect because he's our creator yes and he's perfect and good mm -hmm. which why would you why wouldn't you want to be under his authority and rule I want to be under his authority because he knows me better than anyone else. He literally made me and he made this perfect world, not perfect world. I'm, when I'm looking at creation, I'm looking at our backyard and mm. I'm looking at nature and it's perfect. Why wouldn't you want to worship and obey a God that is perfect? Well, we hope this encourages you to pursue Jesus and depend on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I want to close us out with one more verse. Um, this is from Luke 11. Jesus says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks the door will be opened. We hope this encourages you and you can find some peace in your relationship with Jesus and pursuing him uh, because I know through my experience that he was pursuing me the whole time, yeah. even when I um, didn't really have the door open. And but every relationship takes two to tango, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to, well, I'm not saying that God won't, pursue you and love you and bless you if you're not pursuing him he will he mm. still will but um it'll be like 10 times better if you are also you know if you're meeting him halfway yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then you can fully you know 
see how good he is and then rely on him. And Mm -hmm. yeah, if you, if you don't know Jesus, I'd yeah, hope that this is encouraging and that you'd ask questions. Um, We're always here to chat more, but even if it's not us, like ask, ask your friends that might know Jesus or, you know, Google, Google it. There's websites like Got Questions and there are tons of resources or, you know, grab a Bible and open it up. There are just so many ways that, and I'm sure that God has already planted people in your life Hmm. to get you to see him. We both had that our entire lives. And Mm -hmm. I think really through each phase, there was at least one person in our lives that was that rock of you know godliness or spiritual strength or Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's yeah we hope hope this encourages you um go knock on jesus's door today Mm -hmm. we love you guys bye bye